What's happening everybody? Welcome back to Life at the Hamid. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you what I'm planting in April in terms of my flowers. I'll do a separate video for the veg that I'm doing because I've got quite a few flowers that I plan to plant. Now some of them I think I'm on the edge of basically if I don't plant them now, they won't be doing so well. However, I'm still going to do them and the others I'm going to be all right with. So make sure you stay right to the end because I'm going to be showing you exactly how I'm doing them and hopefully you're going to enjoy it. All right, so some of these flowers I did last year and I did them straight in the ground because mid-spring you should be able to do them in the ground once the danger of frost has passed. Otherwise, I'm supposed to be doing them indoors. Now, obviously, with baby Elijah here, I've not been able to do them indoors. I have got a couple of violas popping up here and there. Uh, that have self-seeded. Now, I am because I don't have the time to come in and water all the time. I leave nature to itself and I do come in when I can to do the vegetables, but I try to do minimal watering wherever I can. But when you're trying to germinate the seeds, uh, you need to be, make sure they're moist or cover them and they take a lot more time. So I'm going to be doing them in pots, taking them home, making sure they germinate and transplant them. Obviously, things like poached eggplant, you should be putting them there and then, and certain flowers do not like to be transplanted, but we'll go into that later. All right, everyone, let's get to it. I'm just gonna fill these up with compost, get ready, and then we'll go into what I'm going to be planting. Catch you in a second. All right, everybody. So, as you can see, everything's been um, potted, and the compost is in there, the labels are on, and I'm ready to go. I've given them a quick water, so that the seeds can just lay on something and I'm not disturbing it too much by overwatering. I'm going to sprinkle some compost on top and going to give it a light sprinkle afterwards. So what am I growing today in terms of my flowers? So I've got corn chamomile. Now that's something I've wanted to grow because uh, it's good. It's a good wildflower flower and it's something that I just wanted to add to the wild garden. So I'm going to have a little section that I'm going to put all the corn, chamomile, the poppies and things like that. And just hopefully have like a little wildflower section in this allotment. Um, that's the aim. Let's see how it goes. So I've got that. So let's quickly plant that first. Now, also, if I haven't got this wrong, I can use this for chamomile tea, which is something I've not ever done before so I want to try that and see how that goes because I've not tried it but if I am going to try it I'm going to grow it myself and try it I'm just going to do it. which one did I put it here corn chamomile so I'm going to put it here now to be honest this one I'm not sure if I can transplant it but I'm sowing quite a few and let's hope that once it's there if, I, if anything I let it grow strong here and I'll transplant it straight from here but there's only one way to find out, it is to try. So that's my corn chamomile done. Okay, the next one. Oh, so the marigolds that I've done, unfortunately, I've got a few left, but slugs got to them. So I had them in the greenhouse at home, and maybe there was a snail in there or something. I'm going to give that a good clean out. But I got um, slugs in them, or slugs got to them, so I'm going to do a few more. I don't think it's too late. But I'm going to do quite a few more because that is very important for beneficial insects to come and deal with a lot of the stuff in the garden, all of the pests and whatnot. And they go very well with tomatoes. So I usually plant them with my tomatoes to mask the scent. And it just looks beautiful. So I've done a whole load more of those. Again, I told you that my last ones didn't, um, my self save seeds didn't work. I'm not going to try those today. I'm just going to go with what works. What's next? So we've got Asta, Queen of the Marker. And now these are, um, they're like ostrich plumed flowers. I don't know how to describe them. I'll put a picture up for you to see. But they're really nice cut flowers. Now, what it is, is obviously when I go buy flowers for Daffy or whatnot, I'm going to the shop. It's expensive. But I think it's more meaningful if I can grow a section and actually make my own bouquet. So that's the plan. Again, I've not done it. I've not really delved into flowers too much. But um, the idea is you work towards it, you learn, you adjust, and you get there. So cut flowers is something I'm going to 
do and these looked really beautiful when I was looking at them all right so let's get these seeds out very small seeds so I'm gonna thinly sprinkle them over here and then I'm gonna transplant them in their final location there we go the more the merrier there's quite a few seeds here so who cares but they're quite nice I think they grow to about half a meter so they're gonna be really good for cut flowers all right what's next next is cosmos fizzy purple obviously purple being my favorite color and i love cosmos again all of these attract butterflies they attract bees it's all going to be good for the allotment but also just for your well-being isn't it it's so nice to come to a place and just see colors and vibrancy and just a lovely wide array of flowers growing so i'm going to try to put these in between everything that i'm growing that should be plenty Oh, not too many seeds left. Let's see if I can save some seeds. And next is the Cosmos Dwarf Mix. So I'll probably put these in the borders around the garden at home and at the front of my drive as well. I've got um, a whole bunch. Now, this Dwarf Mix is a mixture of white, pink, purple, different colored Cosmos. So they're going to be lovely in the borders. I'm going to mix it in between. And the reason I'm actually doing them all separate and not scattering them around, because I could easily scatter these around. However, um, I want to pick and choose where I put them. I'm going to actually research into the sizes, put the taller ones at the back. I haven't had enough time to do that. And just try and kind of artistically, <laughs> as, as, as artistically as I possibly can, um, not really the best at that, place them around and play with the colors. All right, what's next? Helipterium roseum giant. Now this is, I believe, a white to pink flower. Um, again, it's a cut flower. The seeds on this are quite nice, actually. They're quite cottony. Um, where did I put the label for that one? So let's see how this grows. I think I tried this last year, but it wasn't successful. So I'm going to oversaw this one in here. Again, all of these you can transplant later. So I'm sowing them here to save some space. I'm going to take them home to keep an eye on them and give them the best chance. That'll do. And hopefully we can get a few of these down. Now, Giant, I think this is the cut flower as well. So let's see how that goes. Now, I've got my red sunflower seeds. So I usually do yellow sunflowers. However, I want to mix it up. And I didn't do any sunflowers in the allotment last year. And my neighbor over here did and they look beautiful. So I bought some red sunflower seeds and I'm gonna basically plant these. And you know what? I'm gonna harvest seeds. The squirrel got to my seeds this year when I saved them. I'm gonna harvest the seeds and actually roast them and keep them. I think it's important to be able to do things like that. So that's plenty over there. I probably do not pop some in the ground too and see how that goes at home. But that's basically those ones. So those are the red sunflowers. And obviously after the red sunflowers is going to be the yellow sunflowers. Now, all of these, again, like I said before, are going to be amazing to catch the pollinators. And what is, is I want to do really, these are really tall, by the way. So the yellow sunflower, the red sunflower, they're going to be like lighthouses for the insects to come and say, okay, you know what, there's some pollen over there, nice big flower, let me come over there and see. And then the other flowers that are lower will attract them towards my vegetables to help pollinate, which is the idea. So I want the sunflowers to be like the lighthouse of the allotment and the garden so that beneficial insects can come and know that they've got a feast of pollen, which is Useful for me, useful for them, and it just helps the environment. What do I have here? This is nasturtium, right? This is kind of like a climbing. I think it climbs up to about 1.5 uh, meters high. Now, I've never grown it, but I've had viewers say that I should be growing them. They're sprawling as well, I think. Where did I put my nasturtium here? So I've never grown them, but this is nasturtium purple emperor. Now, the reason I've not grown nasturtiums is I don't like the color of them I don't like the look of them so I went online because 
everyone always grows them. Whenever you look at YouTube channels, whenever you look at gardeners, they're always growing nasturtiums and they're very good and beneficial for the garden and especially allotment gardening and vegetable gardening and whatnot. So I found these ones and these ones looked actually quite nice. So I decided, you know what, if I'm going to buy them, I'm going to buy these, otherwise I'm not doing nasturtiums. It was a no-no for me. What else do I have in my pocket? I have comfrey. Now, this is not a flower. However, I had to add it to this video because it is a natural. It's just amazing and all around. It's a perennial, and which means it comes back every year. But it's a natural, like liquid or well, it's a natural uh, manure basically it's got actually oh, i can't remember but it's got more nitrogen i think nitrogen is about 15 percent nitrogen in manure and this has about 18 or 19 percent nitrogen in the leaves so it's better than manure so i'm going to put these i'm going to grow these and put these in my compost heap when they grow to add nitrogen which helps plants develop more greenery and more um, green foliage but not only that is i can make a liquid manure by putting the leaves into water and letting it rot down and then basically sieving it and using it as a liquid manure when i need more green uh, foliage growing in my plants so comfrey is another one to the list now in terms of the other two these are supposed to be scattered However, I'm not going to scatter them. It's the corn poppy, corn poppy red and the Californian poppy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do both. There's lots. I've got a lot of seeds. So I am going to actually basically put these and these are wildflowers. They grow back. If they're happy, they'll grow back and self seed year on year. So I might put these in the wildflower area that I want to do. But I'm also going to see how they transplant. So this one is the corn poppy red Flanders. Um, yep, I'll put it in the right one. I'm going to sprinkle that. And they're very, very fine in terms of the seeds. So let's see how that goes in terms of transplanting. I don't know if it's going to do well, but I'm going to do both. I'm going to transplant the seeds and I'm going to do um, a direct sow in the area that I want them to grow. And these, these are lovely. There's some behind me growing Californian poppies. They're really beautiful. And they've got like a wafery, papery, thin leaf. But it's just beautiful how nature grows different flowers. And these, these always catch my eye. So I want to grow these. Whoops. The whole load fell out, but why not? There we go. And they're really, really lovely. So... I'm going to basically grow these. And again, these grow back year on year. So we're going to see how they do. So I'm just going to put them in the pots. I've got the pots here ready. I dropped seed here somewhere. There it is. And put that in. So now that I've got them in there, I'm just going to cover them with a little bit of, what's it called? Compost. And then I'm going to water them in. But basically, this is what I'm growing in terms of my flowers. And hopefully the allotment will look a lot better this year. I find I do much better when I basically sow in pots and then transplant after. Especially in my garden, actually, I do self, like just direct sow. But in my garden, I can go out and see if it's dried up, keep them moist. It's easier to just come and go because you don't want your seeds drying up after you've sown them. They need a certain point to germinate and keep moist before you can let them go and once they root they'll go searching for water themselves but basically these should take within seven to eight days most of them i think some take a bit longer 10 days but hopefully this is a whole wide array of flowers to basically be um, planting let me know if you plant actually different ones if you have different things are there any flowers that you plant or prefer? I look into them. Could you know what? See, other people have different tastes, different experiences, and um, it's always good to share and see what people like. I never would have known about the California poppy if my neighbor didn't grow these and if they didn't self-seed. So, yeah, please do let me know. 
and uh, we're going with that. Also, if there's any good cut flowers, because obviously I'm not a florist, I usually buy them from the shops. So if there's any good cut flowers that I could basically grow, obviously you've got your roses, so I've got a couple of these, Cosmos. Um, anything to add to the collection would be lovely to know. So there you have it, everyone. I'm really looking forward to these sprouting and growing. Hopefully they all germinate and do well. I'm just going to basically put a nice sprinkling of water on top of all of these. And we're good to go. So please remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Um, really does well for the channel and it helps me grow. We're nearly there in terms of a thousand subscribers so i'm really excited but irrespective of that is i know that i'm building a community and this is something that my child and children hopefully more to come eventually will be able to watch back and look at and i can actually show that you can be sustainable especially in a hundred square foot allotment garden all right everyone Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.